Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my Python for Finance video tutorial series. Is We went and we created some really ridiculously awesome portfolios. But what I have received requests for is to do regression analysis on the portfolios we crafted so we can make predictions about our portfolios and other portfolios to see what could be coming for our portfolios so that we can prepare to be sad or happy. <laughs> Either way, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so to be able to come in here and make predictions about the future movements of our portfolio, we're gonna use the last tutorial. So part nine, all this code, I have all this code, a link to it in the description, of course. So everything is the same, all of the things that we did in our previous part. Now, the only thing we need to do here is to set up our code so that we are going to be able to, or set up our, our data frame with all our, our portfolio in it. We're gonna have to have it structured so that we'll be able to analyze it almost as if it was a single security. All right, so we did all this stuff. Look how smart you are, you know how to do all this stuff. All right, so what's important, we have to get our old data, older data, because we're going to be projecting in the future from data the whole way back to 2017. So we have our portfolio list. This is our stocks, and this is how many shares that we are going to have. I just put that there just to be able to reference it here on this page. And now I want to go in and I want to get my data frame with all of my portfolio data. But I want to go back to 2017 this time. So I'm gonna say get portfolio daily return. We created this in the last video. And I just want to go to 2017 and 01-03. That was the first trading day. If I can find the three, there we are. And then we're gonna go the whole way through 2020, 12 and 31. And what are we gonna to need to pass to this? Well, if you remember from last time, we are going to get the number of shares that we are purchasing as well as our portfolio list. And if we want to go and make sure this came through, we can just go pour our total portfolio data frame. Whoops. And let's just run the whole entire thing. It didn't work because I forgot to load the page. And there you can see, there is everything. There's all our securities. This is the value of our portfolio in 2017. And you can see the total portfolio, so $5,130, and we converted that into $19,232. So not too shabby, and that is why everybody likes to invest as long as you do it the right way. Now, I talked about this previously, but I'm going to cover it again because I've covered so many things. All right, so what we're going to do is we will train our model on a first group of data. And what that is going to be is the first 80% of our total price changes. Okay, so from the beginning in 2017, 80% forward, that is the data we will use to um, make predictions and so forth. Then what we're gonna do is test the model using the last part of our data, or the last 20%. And we are modeling using real known true results. Now, are these forecasts, while they are based off of real data that we are providing, will it definitely happen? No, <laughs> but it is more likely to continue on its current trend, depending on how dramatic the slope is for the projection. Okay, and if nothing dramatic occurs, like major wars, pandemics, and so forth, which we know can happen, more than likely, our prediction is at least going to trend in the right direction. Now, what we're going to be using here is what is called the ARIMA model and auto regression. And auto regression refers to a model that regresses based on prior values. And what it does is it focuses on trying to fit the data as well as possible by examining differences between values instead of the values themselves. And of course, like I said, any outside effects not in the data can't be used, of course, to make predictions. So we cannot predict wars or pandemics 
what we can best do is just use the data that we have here to try to make predictions based off of old performance, which is extremely valuable. Now, the very first thing we're going to need to do here is that we are going to need to change our data into daily data. So I'm going to say total portfolio data frame equals total portfolio data frame and change the frequency to daily. All right, very important, have to do that. And we can come in here and verify that indeed it is set to daily just by calling for index and you can see frequency is daily. All right, so we did that correct. All right, so it's all about just getting our data in the right place. All right, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to delete non-data, any NANs that are inside of here. And there are going to be some because we are working daily now and people don't trade every single day of the year. So we need to get rid of those. So I am going to just go fill an A and I am going to use the method. There's many different methods, but I'm just going to say if there is no data, use what was previously there. Okay. I think that is going to work out good for us. And then what I need to do is I need to delete any unneeded columns. So I'm just going to call this delete columns is equal to and what is going to be inside of there? Well, if we look here, we do not want any of these guys, any of the individual stocks. All we're interested in is total. We don't need daily return either. So we want to get this, all of these guys right here, and come down inside of here and paste those inside of there. But then also, we want to get rid of this also. Just come over here like that. And then we also want to get rid of daily return is it called daily return make sure we get it right yes daily return and not daily returns okay so those are the columns we want to get rid of from our data and only keep total so to get rid of them of course is an extremely easy process just delete columns like that with our for loop and then we can just go total portfolio data frame is equal to total portfolio data frame and inside of here we are going to list each of those pieces we want to drop and of course we need to say drop so we're going to get rid of all of those and axes is equal to one okay so that is going to leave us just with our total data which is all we're interested in now i'm going to set some things for seaborne and that is going to be used for plotting. So I'm just going to go S and S. These are just standard things that I do. And you can play around with a whole bunch of different styles, whatever you would prefer to look at. I'm going to use a dark grid style. And then I'm going to go PD dot plotting register mat plot lib. And what this is going to do is it's going to automatically add date time converters to this. All right. So converters. And we also are going to need to define our figure size. To do that with Seaborn, you go SNS and MPL.RC and figure and a figure size that works good for my monitor. Depends on the size of the monitor, what you want to look at, how closely and how big you want it to be, is this guy right here. Okay, so we got those set. Then I need to set the figure in the axes. To do so, you just go figure and axes is equal to and call plot sub plots like that. And I have tutorials on Seaborn if you want to get learn more about it. In the description, I'll put a link to all my data science videos. I have tons of them. I have pretty much a data science video on just about everything. All right. Now what we need to do is we have to figure out what are called lags for our data set. So periods of time in which we do not have any major changes in data. And the easiest thing is to just not worry about it and let everything be handled for you. So I'm going to go AR select order and total port and there's our data frame 
and I'm going to define a max lag equal to 30. Doesn't matter really. And this is just going to be, we could print these out if we'd want to look at it, but it's really not. It's just a calculation based off of our data. And we're just letting everything be handled for us, which is the way to go. All right, now we are going to come in here and create our model using the whole entire data set. So I'm gonna go with our auto regression and get our total portfolio data frame and what are we interested in that we want to analyze well we want to enter uh, we're interested in the total column that is what we're shooting for and then we just go lags and pass in the lag data that was automatically calculated for us and there it is all right so now what's up well we have to go model uh, fit and this is going to be equal to just by calling model fit. And of course, like I said, this is going to create the model using our whole entire data set that we have provided for us. And there we go. And then what I want to do is I want to figure out how many observations I have to work with. How many stock price value um, evaluations do I have? So to do this, we're just going to go total D uh, or portfolio df like that and if we run that we see that we have 1459 so what we want to do now is we want to go and take let's put a note here so we'll say 1459 is our total all right so i said that 80 percent is going to be what we train on so let's just say 80 percent is 1167 and the last 20% we don't even care about. All right, so let me just verify my math's correct. And I just checked in my math's correct. Okay, so there we go. So now what I need to do is define what is going to be my training data period. So there's a training data frame. So I'll go total and portfolio data frame. And I am specifically, I just want some of it. I wanna start at the beginning. And then I want to go to 1167, and that's going to get me data on the first 80%. And then I'm going to say my testing is going to be the last 80%. So let's just go total portfolio data frame and like this. And then we don't need to worry about the last 20% because you can just go like this, 1167 and this, and it'll get all of it. All right, so that's the reason why I didn't go and calculate what the 20% is. There's no point in it. Okay, so now what I need to do is define my training model over a certain number of days. So I'm gonna say train model, and it's a very e there's a very easy way to find out what we can do. This is also something that we wanna play with. So, um, but normally what I do is I go total and portfolio data frame because you want to get your training period as accurate as humanly possible. And one way to do that is just to play around with this. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to throw a thousand in there. I know it's too high. And then I'm going to say fit and this is going to be, I'm going to use what is called White's covariance estimator. We've talked about covariance 50 million times. So I think you, if you don't have any idea what covariance is, go watch the previous videos. I don't want to waste everybody's time by covering that again. All right. So there we go. We got this. And this is going to give us an error message. Boom. All right. So what are we going to do? It says, well, GNRC not found in the indice. So if you get that error message, you know what that means? That means that these columns have already been wiped out. So what we can do is just go like this and we can run it again. All right, boom. All right, and this is the error that I said you're gonna get. The model specification cannot be estimated. The model contains 1,001 regressors, da, 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 da. And then the important part is right here, 459 data points available. So that means we wanna change this to about 459. Remember I said, whenever we do actually plot this, this number right here is the number we will be messing around with to try to get better results. All right, so now what do we need to do? 
Well, we need to define the start and end for our predictions. And the start, I'm going to say, is the length of the training data frame. And the ending is going to be the length of our training data frame, like this, plus whatever the length is for our testing data frame. And then you're going to have one less than that. Okay, so there we got those defined. All right. Now what we need to do is make our prediction. So I'm gonna say prediction is equal to, and you call train underscore model, and you specifically call predict on it, and you are going to define your starting period, your ending period, and I hope all of this is very understandable, and dynamic is marked as true. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to plot my testing data. So I just go AX is equal to test and DF dot plot and AX is equal to AX. And this is going to be more than likely an orange. I'm not sure. We'll find out. And then we have our prediction and plot and AX equals AX. I believe this will be green by default. We'll find out. Then what I want to do is I want to predict, let's say you don't normally predict that far into the future. 30 days is probably going to be highly accurate, um, you know, within reason. Um, but I'm going to just do 60 days. So again, we do start equal to end, and end is going to be equal to and, and then if you want 60 days, you just put 60, okay? If you want 30, put 30 there. And again, dynamic is equal to true. All right, so we have that set up. Now what we're gonna do is just plot that. So we're gonna plot our training data, we're gonna plot actual data, and then we're gonna make predictions on top of all of that. So plot and AX is equal to AX like that. And let's run it. And you can see right here, this is this is through a very tumultuous, crazy period of time here that we are plotting, of course. And the orange data here is going to represent our training. So this is our model trying to be as accurate as humanly possible. And you can see it's pretty accurate. It's in, in major crazy situations. It's not super accurate, but in general, you can see that it is. And then you can see over here, the prediction trend line for our portfolio is definitely on the upswing. So in this circumstance, I would say that most definitely the trend for our stock portfolio is positive, obviously. And that right there is an example of how we can perform auto regressions on portfolios of stocks to make forecasts. All right, so hopefully you guys found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.